We Brits are a nation of obsessive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units straining at the seams, wow. <laughs> groaning garages, and stuffed garden sheds. Wow, oh I've God. forgotten how much stuff I've had. Home to dreams. It's my director's chair. Past lives. That's unbelievable. And untold baggage. And we're drowning in it. Heaven's sake, what are all these things? But among the clutter and the junk... Empty box! <laughs> my mission is to find buried treasure. We've got to put it in at one or two hundred pounds. Gosh. Yeah. Seriously. Unlock memories. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And turn trash into cash. 260, 270, 280. <laughs> Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. Hello, I'm Aggie McKenzie, and I'm on a mission to help hoarders get ruthless with their rubbish. Meet our first hoarder, postmistress Stella Swain, who, with the help of son Adrian, wants to stamp out her storage issues for good. Stella's three and a half year storage bill has already cost her over £3,000, and her hoard is still growing. But how did it happen? I used to collect stuff because I liked it. Now it's a case of hoarding it because I think it, we, we will at some point use it. In fact, it was a life-changing event that sent Stella's hoarding into overdrive. I had a stroke six years ago and it affected me more mentally than physically. And to get through, help me through it, I did a lot of buying the things. The storage unit seemed like a good idea. Clear all the stuff out, sort the house out, bring the stuff back, sort it out. Kind of never happened. With Stella well on the road to recovery, she doesn't need the stuff around her anymore. But will she be able to face letting it go? This year seems to have been the first year I've kind of felt more like I did before the stroke. And I'm now feeling I'll be able to cope with actually getting rid of the things I don't need. Stella lives near the historic Devon city of Exeter, which boasts one of the oldest cathedrals in Britain. But as well as charity shop foraging, Stella also has a more eccentric hobby. My son and I are both into steampunk. Steam what? Basically, it's Victorian science fiction. Steampunks were first seen on the streets in the late 80s, and the movement covers music, fashion and literature. It's to do with the industrial age, so goggles are very much steampunk. Something like Jules Verne would be classified as steampunk. I particularly buy material if I think it'll work for one of our carnival outfits. I buy clothes which will work for, hopefully, for our steampunk. I didn't do quite such a big one. Oh, he's gorgeous. Despite supporting his mum through good times and bad, Adrian now thinks Stella should start decluttering. The buying I really didn't see until later on when she actually got the storage unit and then I realised that, wow, this is actually quite a lot of stuff and, you know, she's just going to put it off and put it off and I don't want to to do that, I want her to get rid of it. But for Stella, there's no such thing as junk, especially if there's a family connection. My storage unit is brimming. It's full of lots of memories. Memories is probably a good word. She's going to find it hard. Um, she's going to look at the items and think, oh, I remember this and I remember that. And Stella certainly remembers her hoard of postal memorabilia. I started my post office collection soon after we bought the post office and it used to be on display until I decided to declutter my post office and unfortunately a lot of it ended up in a box in the storage unit. And she's already got a plan for the cash she's hoping to save on storage. If we make any money on the stuff we sell, um, we're going to a steampunk convention and it would be nice to buy some bits to go with our outfit. It's going to help her a lot if she can get it all sorted because it's going to be one less thing to worry about. I'm hoping Stella will go at full steam and deal with her industrial strength hoarding once and for all. Do you know what's in all these boxes that no. you've got in there? No. no. Some of them, yes, but far too many to remember all of it. Mm. Don't know about you, I'm very excited about this. Let's have a look. Oh, maybe I'm slightly less excited <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you've certainly got your money's worth here, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes. Every yes. square inch taken up. Well, we better get them out and have a look. How far does this go back? Um, you could fit a small car in it. This I bought for my granddaughter. It's a dolly. It's lovely, this. So would you call yourself a bit of a hoarder? Um, yes. 
And do you think there's anything in here that's worth anything that you could sell and get some money back on? But, I mean, I have quite a few collections, so yes, there's going to be stuff that's worth money. That's a definite keep. Um, yes, why is it in here? Adrian made this in woodwork class. Adrian! <laughs> it's so beautiful, it needs to be used. It needs to be used and loved. Yeah. And that's how you're going to get your enjoyment out of yes, it, isn't yes. it? Ah, no, this is a box I've already sorted. Um, oh, when you've sorted I, I, this? Yeah, because look, I wrote on that oh, one. See, you've got sale on this. People don't really buy videos anymore, do they? No, they don't. You can knit them. Knit them? Yes, I have made my granddaughter... What do you mean, knit them? You pull the it all out, like, you use it like wool. Oh, it wouldn't be very cosy. There's quite a lot of um, yarn on one of these. And I don't know how many people would want to knit bags out of the tea. No, probably not. <laughs> I think it's probably a skip thing. Right, we've got our work cut out here, haven't we? We've got to get every single thing out and then we can really get stuck in, OK? okay. Stella's a serious hoarder, but can I help her control her clutter for good? Our next hoarder is primary school teacher Sam Lake and her husband James. Renting two large storage units have cost the couple nearly £6,000. But the units aren't just proving a financial drain, they're an emotional one too. So what's the story? In 2004, my mum passed away very suddenly from cancer. And then in 2006, my dad then passed away from cancer as well. So it was all a bit of a shock. So it was a really hard time. Sam lives in the ancient Devon market town of Tavistock on the edge of Dartmoor. After her parents died, Sam was left with her house in nearby Cornwall. But as well as dealing with the pain of bereavement, she also had to face sorting through a huge number of their personal belongings. My dad was really into collecting. He certainly liked to keep hold of lots of things. <laughs> I think it's the way I'd put it. Stamps, coins, even some toys that I can remember actually in their original packaging. We needed to empty the house so that we could sell it. So we found a local storage unit and put anything that we thought was of value or sentimental, we'd put it in the storage unit for the time being. But six years later, Sam's still paying for two storage units. So why the delay? I've been busy with my children, sort of bringing up two very young ones, and that sort of really occupied us. I've had a change of career, building up my experience as a teacher. We're now having to pay council tax on my mum and dad's house. Money is starting to tighten. We've kind of reached that point where we have to do something about it. Husband James is also at the end of his tether which isn't helped by the couple's rapidly diminishing bank account. Well, even if we have it down by one unit, that would half the bill. The units are costing us a considerable amount per month, and with everything getting tighter, working longer hours for less and less, well, we, are, we are struggling a little bit now. And stress-wise, it's, it's hitting us hard as well. Rather than us concentrating on our careers, our family, it's eating into it. Hmm. Not fair. <laughs> this is us sat with my dad listening to his... He had a massive collection of music. Mm. It's anybody's guess what's stored in the units, but for Sam, they'll certainly hold plenty of memories. The biggest challenge for me on the day is probably going to be um, letting go of as much as I can and sort of accepting that it's time to move on and I can't keep hold of everything. With the bills piling up, Sam knows that ditching the storage could save her thousands. And she already has plans for the money. We need to get my mum and dad's house ready so that it's really sellable. So I think that's something some of the money would go towards is um, really getting that place looking really nice. The question is, will Sam finally be able to let go? This has been something that's kind of built up over time and I kind of feel at the point now where I'm ready to deal with it and before that I wasn't. It looks like it's going to be an emotional journey for Sam as she sorts through her inherited hoard. I've sent antiques and collectibles expert Tom Keane along to give her a hand. Ah, hello. Hello. Sam? Yes. James? Hello, Sam. How are you? Yeah, good. Very well, thanks. Yeah. Well, you made the decision, we're all here. Let's. Uh... Take a look. OK. Blimey, O'Reilly. Yes. <laughs> There's wow. a lot of things. It looks like we've got our work cut out. Trains and their controls. Who like trains? 
my dad, who was really into trains. There's, uh, there's definitely Hornby train sets and things in here mm -hmm. somewhere. There's lots of collections of things. My dad liked to collect Did lots he? of different things, yeah. Okay. Well, there's dinky toys and things in here. Dinky, you know, that looks quite interesting. Some early models there. I have found these. The first time I came across these was um, when we were in the loft emptying the house, so it's the first I knew about them. So, Sam, how are you feeling when you're handling this again after all Mixed these years? emotions, I must say. It's, um, it's kind of... In, I'm intrigued to find out what's in here, but also there is that tinge of... I feel a little bit sad, really, that, you know, it's all in here and that's kind of my parents' life. That's but right, memories. memories. Yeah, but it's, it's nice in a way. I think it's good. It's a nice bit of closure in a way. I've really got to do something important for you. I'd better go and check this. <laughs> Just make sure it hasn't gone off. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> I think I found that um, model railway stuff you're talking about. Sam now needs to start sorting through her late parents' hoard. But faced with a unit full of memories and a massive amount of stuff, I wonder if she'll be able to pull it off. Coming up, the size of Sam's hoard proves hard to take in. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God, there's so much stuff. And I see why postmistress Stella Storage is costing her a packet. I think, unfortunately, everybody kept giving me post boxes. Mm. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. Earlier, we met postmistress Stella and her son, Adrian. She opened a unit to declutter her home after suffering a stroke. People don't really buy videos anymore, do they? No, they don't. You can knit them. Knit them? More than three years on, major retail therapy has left her with an even bigger hoard and a bill of over £3,000. And when teacher Sam Lake sadly lost her mum and dad to cancer, she inherited all their possessions, which meant renting two storage units, so far costing her almost £6,000. It's all in here and that's kind of my parents' life. But right, memories. Nice bit of closure in a way. Later, I'll be asking our antiques experts to help our hoarders pick out anything of value they can take to auction in the hope they can recoup at least some of the cash they've spent on storage. I've certainly got my work cut out with steampunk Stella and her hoard. Ah, uh, that's carnival stuff. I can't get rid of that because that's not mine. And Sam's already struggling with what's oh, wow. in store for her. Stamps. Lots of stamps. Wow. I'm from Ghana. To help our hoarders clear their units, I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces. Skip it for anything old, broken or just plain awful. Or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity pile onto which they can put anything that's too good to chuck. It's time for our storage hoarders to get tough with their stuff They've got just three hours to sort through their possessions. But so our hoarders can see exactly what they're dealing with, I've arranged for some help moving their items to a larger space. Now the units have been emptied out, it's clear to see how their hoards stack up. Stella has opened her unit to reveal a real jumble of stuff she's amassed over the years. Sam, meanwhile, has unlocked a huge pile of collectibles belonging to her late dad. But it's anyone's guess what value, if any, they might have. It's time to get sorting. First up, it seems that Stella's on a mission. I'm not sure that it's better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking quite a lot of it can go. The, the memory stuff's going to be the worst stuff. The things that have got memories with them, and particularly some of the kids' things the kids perhaps have made, those type of things are going to be difficult to get rid of, but I need my space. I need to forget my luggage. Right, that's a definite keep, because that's wool. Oh, crumbs. Keep. Here's we better keep carnival stuff. Hang on a minute. She's supposed to be getting rid of stuff. No, I need that. Adrian looks wound up as Stella's keep pile continues to grow. My post office collection. That one I am definitely keeping. That was my first post box, so that's definitely keeping. I've owned my own post office 15 years, but I've worked in the post office since I left school. These are all cards with post boxes on. Sorry. I don't understand why she's got all the post office stuff. If it's not going to be on display, get rid of it. Time for me to go in. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Um, What's all this? Not, not a good box to start with, to be it's honest. Not, is it? For yeah. heaven's sake, what are all these things? Yeah, I don't this, know what they this are, is, but... Some of these are to get rid of, so I've got rid of some. Right. There is a heck of a lot of boxes here. Yes. Look, it's even a local one, look. Bristol's of Devon. 
He used to work there. Yeah, right. That's why I'm keeping that one. Hold on. Do you, do you want to keep that one? No. It's kind of got out of hand a bit, maybe, is um, it? A little bit, yeah. I think, unfortunately, everybody kept giving me post boxes. Mm. Ooh, this looks interesting. I used to do a market store, and this has got all my <coughs> haberdashery stuff in. I mean, a lot of this could go, to be honest, but um, yeah. it's just a case of sorting through it. Should we do that right now? What? Sort. I think maybe I'll just um, sell it. Oh, yes! I'll, I'll rescue back quickly the one odd one yes. I want. Yes. Right. Excellent. Oh, Adrian, you should be helping your mum. While Stella mines her collection of tins, tapes and other tat, Sam has a real surprise in store. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God, there's so much stuff. Um, How on earth did we fit all this in the two storage units? I don't even know where to start. Let's have a look. And it's not long before she unearths some precious family mementos. Oh, James, I found some really old photos here. Let me see. Look. Because my dad used to do loads of photos. Well, that's, that's, that's your mum? That's my mum, yeah. Where did these all come from? They're just photos that my dad took over time. There's another picture of mum. That's quite arty, isn't it? Mm. I'm definitely going to keep the photos of my mum. No, I, th I think, yeah. And it seems that every box is giving up reminders of the past. These were in uh, our front room from when I was a child by Don Brecken. Kind of makes me feel... A little bit nostalgic and just brings back some nice memories, but I think I'm ready to sort of let them go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the memories really are flooding back for Sam, which must make clearing out the unit that much harder. Luckily, our expert Tom is on hand to shed some more light on those evocative prints. What did your dad like about them so much, do you know? The steam trains, he was just so into and really, really interested in steam trains. Don Brecken was a, a famous artist for trains, mm. and uh, because they're reproduction prints of his works, they're not too valuable. The most valuable one is the one that's signed by him. Yeah. Any time you get an artist signing the work, it also doubles or trebles the value. But even so, this is only probably worth about 30 or 40 pounds right, in okay. today's market. That's what I wanted to find out, whether the uh, value outweighed my sentimentality for the prints. That's interesting. Yeah. It can't be easy, but I'm glad to see Sam staying level-headed about clearing out all this stuff. There's a really old typewriter here. It's not ancient, but... The old Imperial typewriter. Funny, there is a market for these, mm. but the market's in China. <laughs> right. Yeah, so ch the Chinese are buying them to ship back home. OK. Value-wise, they're also very clever. I know they can buy them for 10 or 20 pounds, mm. so they're not going to give you 100 pounds for it. Auction site? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. One thing's for sure, Sam's dad was a serious hoarder and collected a huge variety of things, from prints to stamps to model cars. Oh, they're the um, dinky toys, aren't they? Yeah. Definitely sell. These could be quite a find, so Tom sends Sam to meet vintage toy expert John Cabello, who's been dealing in all things die-cast for 20 years. She hasn't unearthed much of great value yet, so fingers crossed John can shift Sam's quest for cash up a gear. Right, well, you've got some really, some of them are really nice uh, items. You know, when you talk about die cast toys, Dinky is top of the list. Dinky toys were first produced in the 30s by Meccano, which was owned by Frank Hornby of Model Railway fame. The toys were made by forcing molten metal into shaped moulds known as die casting. Their heyday was in the early 50s when young boys and even some adults would clamber to buy the very latest models of cars, cranes and trucks. But fierce competition from companies like Matchbox and Mattel hit dinky sales hard and their last toy car rolled off the production line in 1979. How much do you think these might be worth and how would I go about selling them? The condition is such that I'd expect that to make about 60 to 80 pounds. It's difficult to find people to buy. However, these I'm really looking forward to. OK. These are the original boxes. A box model is worth a lot more than, yeah. a, uh, than a, a loose model. This one is worth more than the whole of the rest are put together mm. for so far. This is a real collector's piece. OK. How much do you think this one's worth, then? I would value that at between five to 700 pounds. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's a bit of a shock. 
incredible. Really, yeah. really nice. Amazing. I am really impressed. That's why I left it till last, yeah. because it is in really nice condition. And it says quite a lot about your dad. Mm. If you are interested in selling them, I would be interested in buying them. I would have no problem in offering you £800 for that. Really? Because I really like them. I think they are nice. Wow. I don't know what to say. Um, I think that's a really, really yeah. fantastic offer. And I'd like to take you off on it. Really? All right. OK. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Thank honestly, you. they will be looked <laughs> after. I managed to sell them for £800, so... Obviously, it's been emotional because um, I'm emotionally tied to them, but I think I've made a really nice deal there and I think they've gone to someone who really cares about dinky toys and so I feel good about it. So she should, and there's nothing dinky about £800 in cash, that's for sure. A great start for Sam. Back at her storage unit, Stella's still having a problem sorting the trash from the treasure. Stella, 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 what are you going to do with all these, really? Honestly, truthfully. You, you do craft stuff with them. Yes. What sort of craft stuff? Um, I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> will you really use them? I don't know, will we? That's a no, then. While well, Adrian makes a spectacle of himself, time's fast running out. Yes. Luckily, our hoarders have nearly finished sorting through their stuff. Got changed? Yeah. Yes, I know. That's what having two children does to you. <laughs> it's a envelope maker. It's a bit of wood with holes in it. No, it's an envelope maker. With Stella's stash finally popped on a pile, I'm keen to get to the bottom of her hoarding habits. When you had your stroke six years ago, yeah. before then, did you have masses and masses of stuff before then? I think I had quite a lot of stuff, but I think it got worse when I, after I had the stroke because... A lot of the new stuff, obviously, is stuff I've collected recently. And when you were recovering from your stroke, were you at home for a long time? Yes. So I had all day to... Oh, to cruise around the yes. charity shop. Yes. If you make some money from selling the stuff, have you got a plan for it? Yes. Um, my son and I are into steampunk mm -hmm. and we are going to a convention. But I've also kind of promised the grandkids we'll take them somewhere nice. Mm. That's for a day trip somewhere. It should be easy for you to get rid of a lot of yeah, this I'd stuff. rather be spending more time with the grandchildren than I would be spending time sorting this, to be honest. Yes. Things haven't been easy for her, but it sounds like Stella's finally getting a grip on her storage. Back to the task in hand, though, and time is finally up for our hoarders. Sam and James have loads of collectibles on their cell pile, while Stella's is more of a modest mound. Their next step is to find out if there's any value in the items they want to sell. Mm -hmm. Look at all the details. Coming up, nice. an old camera gives Stella an unusual fashion idea. You'd use as a front on a top hat. Mm -hmm. And will Sam's face be a picture when she gets to auction? This is phenomenal. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm here to help our two stockpilers in distress get strict with their stash when I ask them to keep it, skip it, or sell it. The question now is, do they have anything of value in their piles? Yeah, I know, it's sad, isn't it? But I kept tins for everything. It's drinking chocolate. But why? Self-confessed hoarder Stella can't seem to let go of anything, resulting in a unit crammed with clutter. Pettyfield has been dealing in the world of antiques for over 10 years. But has he found anything in Stella's hoard that could help recoup her storage costs? So, Stella, Petty here has had a good old rummage around in your boxes and okay. picked out some things. We've got over here, we've got the Wade Pigs, uh, which are very collectible, actually. Now, they came out in 1983 by NatWest, who commissioned Wade to make them. And you had to put money into the bank. It was, it was to encourage children, so I don't know who in your family... Yeah, uh, my, my two, two children, they have a set each. So you've got one there who's Maxwell, the son Maxwell. And he's interesting because he was actually named after the ill-fated uh, Robert oh, Maxwell. No. Yes. Right. <laughs> I think that sets probably, if it were to be sold in auction, a good auction estimate would be 50 to £80. Pounds. We've got a wonderful collection of tins here, which are brilliant. And I'm just going to show you something here. This is Huntley and Palmer's, and they were really well known for their novelty tins. 
Um, great designs. This one's copying a sort of Art Nouveau design. It's probably somewhere around the early 20th century. People bought them because they always wanted to get the next one and they were the collectibles of their day. And that could be quite valuable. And I think with the tins that you've got here, we should be looking at taking that to a specialist. And what about this camera here? I try to open it. Ah, here there we are. Go. Look at the engineering. Mm. I mean, that's just wonderful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look at all the detail. Very nice, not terribly valuable, not ter terribly rare either. Probably not worth taking to auction, I don't think. No, no, fine. Not exactly where that's going. Good. It's very, it's very steampunk. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were going to say the skip. No, you'd use uh, maybe as a front on a top hat, mm -hmm. to be honest, or something like that. Well, at least Stella has an eye for recycling. She's keen to hold on to the more personal items, but Stella will also be sending quite a bit to charity. And while she doesn't have much of great value, Perry spotted some things that could fetch money at auction. That set of five weighed pigs valued at 50 to 80 pounds. Perry also thought a Royal Dalton twin-handled children's cup celebrating the birth of Prince William should go to auction with an estimate of 10 to 20 pounds and Stella's varied collection of vintage tins, including that lovely early Huntley and Palmer example, which we're hoping will tick the biscuit at 50 pounds. Most of the tins will be going to auction, but Perry wants to see if retro shop owner Jenny Barrett might be interested in buying a small selection. Well, vintage tins are quite the thing, particularly with the current fashion for shabby chic. The art of printing colored designs onto tins began in the 1860s, for products from food to pharmaceuticals to tobacco, and some examples have been known to sell for hundreds of pounds. But what about Stella's collection? This is interesting. Tell us a little bit more about the Allenbury's pastels. Allen and Hambury's traded under the, the name of Allenbury's, and they were the claimed to be the British pioneer in pastels. I would say this is probably about a 1930s, 1940s tin. I think you would probably to the right person, get about between eight and 12 pounds for this one. So Jenny, we've got this one here. Um, let's just pass it to you. It's got a nice image on the front. This is a Riley's tin for toffees. Um, I would date this at probably 1960s. A lot of tins uh, that we find are quite girly, quite flowery and, and girly, but okay. this is kind of guys. nice guys yeah. one, isn't it? It's kind of a mantique, really. <laughs> so. A push between four and seven, maybe. Yeah. Is it something in terms of this collection that you'd like to make an offer on? I think I'm interested in these four in particular. I would give you around about £30. OK. Um, sounds pretty good, um, considering that, that most of them probably didn't cost me anything at all. I'm really pleased that I got £30 for them. It's £30 that will go to something that I will actually really make use of rather than just keeping something on the cupboard or in the attic. Well, £30 isn't bad for a few old tins, but I think the real moment of truth has arrived. It's time for Stella to see the last of her stash go under the hammer at auction. But will she manage to claw back some cash from her reckless retail therapy? So here we are at auction. Anything you're particularly hopeful about? Some of the tins I know Perry was quite interested in. It would be quite nice to see those go well. Um, the NatWest piggies would be nice because um, that money is going to the kids anyway because th they don't belong to me. Do you have a figure in your head of how much you want to go away with? If we made the low estimate, I would be quite happy. I think I was just over £100, but if it doesn't, we get what we get and we've had a nice day already. Well, Stella's in a positive mood, but will today's auctioneer Matthew Caddick also be in high spirits having seen her items? Stella Swain's items uh, could be really considered as modern collectibles. The Huntley and Palmer tins should do okay today. Condition is everything with those, but people really will collect them regardless of condition if they're the right price. Things like the NatWest pigs, listen, we've seen them a hundred times. They used to do very, very well. They won't exceed uh, the estimate, I'm sure, today, but, you know, she's got every chance of selling them. And it's those pigs that are the first to go under the hammer. Petty thought they could fetch 50 to 80 pounds, but will today's bidders find them hot to trot? £50 for them, £40 for them. Now, I'm writing £40, pounds, shall I pass the lot? All five picks there at £40, pounds. no one wants to bid me at £40, pounds, I'll pass the lot, then no bids. Not so. You've taken those Not home. Sold. <laughs> oh, Stella. Lot number one, oh, well. six, one, Stella. Stella. Over and a flash. Yeah. Just like Hmm, disappointing. Those pigs certainly didn't manage to bring home the bacon. Let's hope that commemorative Royal Dalton Bunnykins Cup fares a little better. Perry estimated a £10 to £20 pound sale price. 
Can't be twenty pounds for it. So you see it go. Ten pounds. Really. It's got to go. <laughs> at ten pounds to my left, half the estimate, but I'm going to sell it for ten pounds unless I see twelve now. All done at ten. Never mind. Okay, ten pounds, right? Oh dear, this isn't looking good. Fingers crossed for Stella's vintage tins then. She's already sold some to a specialist with the rest split into three lots. The first includes the Huntley and Palmer tin, estimated at 30 to 50 pounds. Yeah, do you recognise them? I do. Uh, Ten a piece, 30 pounds for them, 20 pounds for them. 10 pounds for them. Someone put a pour up at 10 pounds, start me. No bids at 10 pounds, shall I pass yes. the lot? 10 pounds, thank you. Well, we'll take it. It's hard work. At 10 pounds, take 12 now. Someone compete, please. At 10 pounds, then we'll all your biscuits going in the new tins at 10 pounds are selling. At 10 pounds, right. one. One, eight, one. Never mind. 10 pounds. Not great, and £20 under the estimate. Will the next lot fare any better? £30 start me, well below estimate, start me £30 for them. No bits of £30, £20 for them. £20 start me, £10. Oh, £10. Oh. Not a poor goes up at £10. Shall I pass this lot then? £10 on bid, thank you, and £12. Oh, £12. At £12, £12, £12, £12, £12, £12, standing in the doorway, we're all done, I'm going to sell them at £12, disappointing but gone. Oh, Stella, Stella. A little bit better, but with the final lot fetching a measly £10, it looks like Stella's tins have fallen pretty flat today. Oh, so how was that for you? You had five items, sold four, yep. but they didn't do that well, did they, really? No, Tell not really, me. but never mind, they're gone. We made a few pounds, um, it'll go to good use. Five little piggies went to market and nothing happened. No, they're going home, unfortunately. They're going home but, again um, with you. Yeah, maybe I'll try selling on the internet or something. So today at auction, minus commission, Stella has made 38 pounds. Add to that the sale of the tins at the specialist shop and she's richer to the tune of 68 pounds. It's a small step, but at least she's heading in the right direction. And what's happening with your unit, Stella? Um, we're starting to clear it out. Um, mm -hmm. We've done a boot sale. Already? Yes, um, we managed to make just over £60 on that. That's good. Um, we've also been selling stuff on the internet. I've made about 50 quid on that. Right. In the next six months, hopefully, it'll all be gone. And if not, maybe we just bin it. So once you gather all the money in, when the pigs are sold, what's going to happen? Well, I'm planning a day out with the grandchildren, is the first thing. And the rest of it we'll probably spend on something steampunk. So, Adrian, how do you think Stella's done so far? She's done very well to get rid of it. Once it's all gone, I think she'll be very happy that it is gone. She, I was afraid I was going to find it really stressful, but it's been actually quite relieving almost because it means that I can actually move forward and leave stuff behind that I no longer need. Well done. It's Thank been you. great. <laughs> it's been real fun. After overcoming her stroke, Stella found herself with loads of stuff she didn't need. She seems determined to deal with her storage and I'm so glad she's staying positive and looking to the future. Coming up, Tom's got some glittering news for Sam and James. There's got to be some serious money there. Wow. Gosh. <laughs> and at auction, one result is enough to make Sam weep. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm here to help two hoarders finally cleanse the clutter that's clogging up more than just their unit. Earlier, we met Stella, who made £68 selling some of the contents of her storage unit at auction. Disappointing, but gone. Oh, Stella. Just enough for a blast of steampunk and a day out with her grandkids. Now it's the turn of teacher Sam Lake and her husband James. This is a great job for a nosy parker. Yes. <laughs> After spending almost six grand on storing her late parents' possessions, cash strap Sam's decided to let them go to auction. Sell, sell. But sorting through the unit has been an emotional experience. Let them go. Yeah. 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 Antiques expert Tom Keane has been helping Sam identify the items that could really help recoup her storage costs. Sam, James, I don't know about you, I'm exhausted. You must be emotionally exhausted. Yeah, I would say so, <laughs> definitely. Now, these proof coin sets, 2002 is the date, but it's silver and gold. This set here should make one or 200 pounds all day long. OK. This set isn't as good. I'll put these in together at 80 to 120. This in at one to 200 pounds and watch them walk out the door. OK. I'll go down this end, the Amiga watch. Whose was that? 
I believe it's my dad's. The interesting thing was I found the paperwork for it somewhere else. That's very important. Oh, right. Mm. If you've got paperwork with a watch, it puts the value up by about 10 or 20 percent. OK. It needs a bit of a tidy up. 120, 180 for that one. Oh, right. This watch over here, now this is a gold one. It's a gold ladies Amiga watch. 150, 250 for that one. Right, a bit okay. better. You've got a whole stack of vinyl records. Yeah. Now, they're not all mm. good. I'm told that vinyl's coming back. You've got some 45s I saw somewhere as well. That's a pretty good haul so far, but just when we think we're done, it looks like Tom has really struck gold. Lots of jewellery. You've got 1,500 to £2,500 there. Wow. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that. You've got 250 or 350 just for that piece there. This one I couldn't find any markings on. I'm pretty certain that's... Four or five hundred pounds. Oh, right. A nice Albert chain like that it would be. Phew! Well, Tom's highlighted some seriously big money items to take to auction, including the men's Omega watch valued at 120 to 180 pounds. The ladies' Omega watch, 150 to 250 pounds. There's that collection of 500 vinyl records spanning four decades and estimated at one to 200 pounds. That set of Royal Mint coins coming in at an impressive 300 to 500 pounds. Plus, with an estimate of two to 300 pounds, Tom thinks the collection of railway models should put them on the right track to make money at auction. There's also the remaining unboxed dinky toys at 100 to 150 pounds. A selection of jewelry estimated at around 1,000 pounds. And that glittering hoard of gold, which Tom thinks could fetch a whopping one and a half to two and a half thousand pounds. But there were a few bulging boxes that also caught her expert's eye. This barra, full of stamps, could be worth a lot of money. I don't know what the value is there, but there's okay. got to be some serious money there, and I hope it is serious, but yeah. we'll find out together and be That'll educated. That would be really together. interesting. Yes. Yeah. Tom thinks the stamps need to be seen by a specialist, so he's arranged for Sam to meet Greg Manning, an expert and buyer with 30 years of experience in the world of philately. That's stamp collecting to you and me. Let's hope you'll make Sam a first-class offer. And how did your dad collect all these stamps, do you know? Then my granddad collected, then my dad started collecting mm. as a young boy. There is some early stuff which would relate to your grandfather, but right. the majority, I think, was, uh, was collected by your father. Right. These have come straight from the post office. Right. They've never been in a book, never been hinged or anything. Those stamps in the packets would, I believe, have joined this collection, which right. is unused stamps, and he's starting to put them in in order now. So this is what you class as mint? Yeah, these are all mint stamps, unused, straight from the post office. Do you say you didn't see your dad with a stamp album? No. Yeah, he must be sitting there sorting these out somewhere and going through for hours, just put yeah. them in the right order. Yeah, it's really interesting. Well, stamp collecting is still one of the world's most popular hobbies, and Sam's dad had a real variety. In 1840, the Penny Black was the world's first adhesive postage stamp, but with 68 million issued, it's not quite as rare as you might think. However, some unusual or flawed examples can still fetch a few hundred pounds. But what about Sam's hoard? These are not investment items. Would you be interested in buying these for your market? What you've got, I've also got, but I've got in more quantity than you. I believe it would sell better if it was broken down into smaller lots. So it looks like it's off to the auction for Sam's stamps. Most of these uh, albums in here, you're, you're only talking £20 an album. They're really low-key. With regards to the Mint GB, market value maybe £200. They are. 350 to 380 there. You've got another £60 there and another 40 in that one. You've got about £1,000 or £1,100 according to Greg's valuations here. So I would suggest that you go to auction, break them down to smaller lots. If two people want something, the valuation goes out the window. They just want it for their collection. They, they will probably very often pay overbook price, so you might get a few nice results, but you might also get a few disappointments. Today's been really useful, actually. Um, the guy in the shop, Greg, has told me a lot of information about stamps that I knew nothing about before today. It was something very new to me. Well, I still think those stamps could help Sam to post a decent profit. In fact, along with the £800 she made on those dinky cars, Sam could be in with a chance of recouping some serious money. I'm really looking forward to getting to the auction and seeing how the rest of our lots do when they go under the hammer. So here's the point of all this, coming to auction. Are you excited? 
Yeah, I must say, I'm quite excited. A little bit... A little bit nervous, but yeah, yeah very excited. A bit emotional as well, I must admit. It's yes. It's not the easiest day. I am excited, but I do feel a little bit strange about the whole thing. We've come on a long journey on this show. Yeah, Sounds come this. a long way. It's been quite hard for her, yeah. so you've done well. Anything you wouldn't be too worried about taking back home again? Maybe a few bits of the jewellery. I have to admit, my mum's jewellery yeah. would be something personal to me. That uh -huh. I haven't taken all of it to auction, but I do think there's a few bits maybe I'd like to keep hold of a bit more. Well, I'm very excited about Sam's lots, but what does auctioneer Matthew Caddick think? Sam Lake's items, when they arrived, uh, unlike the majority that we see coming in, there was masses of it. Gold, costume jewellery, stamps, coins, these are all very strong buyer's markets as we speak, and, and they're big lots. There's a lot for people to get their teeth into. I know from the weekend staff that they have been viewed and poured through extensively, so I expect that they will do extremely well today. Well, that sounds very promising for Sam's impressive hoard. Let's see what happens when the hammer falls. First up is the Ladies Omega watch with an estimate of 150 to 250 pounds. I'll take 190 in the room. 190 is there and 200. That's good. Selling 190. 190, 193. Not bad. 190. Not bad as the ladies' watch clocks in at 190 pounds. Quickly followed by the men's watch, which managed to fetch 160 pounds. Next, with an estimate of one to 200 pounds, let's hope there are a few DJs among our bidders for Sam's dad's collection of records. Lot for the money, 100 pounds start me. 100 pounds on bid straight off the bat, thank you. And 110 there, 120, 130, 140, 150. 160, 170, 180. 200, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, 270, 300, and 10, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360. <laughs> 400, 420, 440. 440 pounds, so you take 460, now 440. He's starting his own mobile disco at 440 pounds. Are we done? <laughs> wow. Amazing, as the records spin out of control to reach 440 pounds. That impressive collection of coins was valued at three to 500 pounds. But will they help Sam cash in with the bidders? 250 pounds, start me for these. 250, no less, 250, 250 on bid, 260, 270, oh. 280, 290, 300, 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, 390, 400, 420, 480, 500, 600 standing at the back of the room now, 620, 640, this is phenomenal, 680 back in, 700, 720, 740, 760, saying like that, 700, 740, and the selling last chance, 740. 740, high line four. Oh, my God. Well, you are doing so well today, girl. I think you're going to cry. Feel yeah. free. I think that would make anyone shed a tear. That's £240 over Tom's upper estimate and a real mountain of money. At £250 to £300, will the first lot of stamps manage to coin it in too? The stamps, £100 on bid and 110 is next. £100 in front of me, take 110 now. And next to you, 120, 130, 140, 150. 160, it started 70, properly 80, now. 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290. At 300 pounds, then we got there in the end at 300. Fabulous. That's pretty wow. accurate estimate. That's good. Isn't it? 300 pounds is a great result, and the other stamp lots did well too, netting a total of 560 pounds for Sam's dad's collection. In fact, his collections are racing out of the sale room, with the trains fetching £150 and the unboxed dinkies bringing in £160. An Indian gold collar sold for a dazzling £370, but what about the rest of the jewellery, which has an estimate of £13 to £1,600? Now it's time to find out. £1,300 a bid, £1,350. I'll take £1,400 now. At £1,350, £1,400 there and fifties next. At £1,400, at £1,400, then commission bidders beat him. We're selling in the room at £1,400. Are we all done? £1,400. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, the bidders really like their bling today because the gold that Tom suggested go to auction fetched £1,400. Added to that nearly £1,300 for the selection of jewellery and we have a really sparkling end to the day. Wow, that was so 
fun result, wasn't it? Incredible. <laughs> it was, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. you must be exhausted after that. Emotionally yeah. drained, I'd yeah. say, definitely. Yeah. I just can't believe it. I'm shocked, to be honest. Yes. So after commission, we've seen Sam's items make over £5,700. Along with the £800 Sam made earlier for her dad's dinky toys, Sam's grand total is over £6,500. That room was on fire downstairs. It's amazing. It was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. So what are you going to do with it? Maybe do some things to my mum and dad's house so that yes. that can finally get that sold. That can be yes. sold, yes. So, the question of the unit, what's happening there? We're just about getting it down to one, aren't we? Mm. Um, There's still so much it's, stuff. It's still, still a lot to sell. It We're has inspired best. us yeah. Yeah. to yeah. keep it. going. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's inspired us to get it sorted, because yeah. um, I do want closure on it all. James, do you feel proud of Sam? Oh, totally. She's, she's come a long way. It's she's brilliant. definitely come a long way. Thank goodness I've got such good support. <laughs> it's been such a great outcome as well, more than I could ever expect, so it's been fantastic. Oh, I'm so pleased. It's been an <laughs> absolute pleasure, really has. Stamps. Lots of it's been stamps. an emotional experience for Sam. She wasn't sure about confronting her parents' storage unit and the memories it would conjure up. But she's managed to come through with flying colours. I think she and James can now face a very bright future without the storage and a very useful amount of money in their pockets. Another success story for our hoarders today. They've turfed out their tat, then sized their units and can now start using storage sensibly. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. Mm -hmm.